Hello and welcome to Meanwhile in Ludo City, the Ludo City podcast, Woohoo. episode one. Yeah. Uh, first, I guess we'll introduce ourselves. We'll all have these Swedish accents, and that's our thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I'm uh, I'm Anton, the main artist at Ludo City. I do mostly like the character art in most games and set the style and stuff. I'm uh, Matthias. Uh, I'm mainly the musician now, I guess, but that's not true, really. Uh, I'm the programmer and the musician. That's that's my main main thing. Yep. I'm Joel. I do emails, sometimes coffee. Uh, yeah, marketing. <laughs> yeah, marketing. <laughs> He's the boss. Ostensibly. Yeah. And I'm Nils. I'm uh, another graphics guy, and I bring terrible games to the job too. I'm Daniel, I'm the voice of uh, Hype Snake in the uh, high score uh, sequence of Hype Snake. Yeah, most known for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So episode one, what are we going to talk about? We're, we're going to talk about SciCard, or upcoming mobile game. So uh, SciCard is... Uh, it also, we, we made this vote for, right. for prototypes. We had a bunch of prototypes out, uh, we made a bunch of vines, put them out for voting, and did Sidecard win? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, third. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first two, the winners, they were both made by Matthias. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, right, there was a, a beat to the action, to the beat shooter <coughs> title that won, I think. Yeah. yeah. A rhythm game. And the second game, what was that? I don't remember either. I think it was the It'll Do board game. Oh, oh right, yeah, the tabletop yeah. one. Yeah. It'll Do Quest. Yeah. 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 So we didn't do any of those two? Yeah. Because uh, Matthias didn't really feel like we would have the time or... Mm-hmm. And you have already been uh, started that. Yeah, Psychard was the Psychard already game. had... Uh, on your own time. The battle part of Psychard was done already. Yeah. Kind of. yeah. But like the most doable in a short amount of time. Uh, yeah. So it's, it kind of looks like uh, Card City Nights in screenshots. Yeah. But what is it? Is it it's sim- a, that's a trailer? It's not actually yeah. a card game at all, really. No. <laughs> it just has the cards because of the, the cards are used to gosh psychic powers like right, you know right. uh, so that's the kind of theme I went with but it's mm. yeah it's a, typ- it's a typical trope can you yeah, guess yeah, what's behind the card exactly. on, on the other side of the card but it's actually Minesweeper yes yeah so it's Minesweeper but with uh, psychic yeah. powers yeah and like an uh, it's kind of like what if Minesweeper was a sports anime <laughs> like they're they're taking awesome. the sport uh, really seriously and uh, they have special powers and that kind of thing. What is that poetry uh, sport that they made an anime of? Oh, uh, Karuta. Yeah. Mm. Mm, I forget what that's called. That does not f- sound game. like a fun anime. <laughs> right. It's, it's yeah. so yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Right. The, these sort of things like you say, well, I think at, I, at least in animes, it's usually about the people, not the actual sport. But mm-hmm. sidecard, you're actually playing all the time. So. Well, there is a story, sort of. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wrote the story. I'm responsible for that. Unfortunately, I think it's it's okay. Maybe. So it's a bunch of people it's living in an apartment. Yeah. And they uh, need to make money, or what? No. What uh, is the story? They're they're all mooching off their friend who who is set for life because she was in a, an accident so she has this uh, uh, this settlement with her company or whatever yeah so she has money and uh, they're all living there being bums yeah and she tells them they should at least go out sometimes and uh, maybe play that uh, game they like to watch on TV mm. it's like a card game and uh, they do <laughs> When things happen, yeah, that, that's like as serious as any other backstory to any other of our games. I yeah. guess it's worth noting that the progression is also very different from Cards City Nights. This is a linear game where you go to tournaments. Um, it's not as big as Cards City Nights. Mm-hmm. It has a different uh, vibe to it. 
Yeah. There, there are like optional things. It's not, uh, it's not a, a completely set path. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You, you pick a character at the start. That's the main one, and then there's uh, a very small amount of shorts. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, it feels like this game is uh, designed to play over and over, as opposed to Card City Nights. Perhaps. Yeah, but it's also not designed. To, uh, it's not designed to play. Um, large amounts of time at in the one, time. In one sitting. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah that, that gets really grating, really. Mm. Well, so I, I did when I play tested it. But, uh. yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, 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 it's more enjoyable to p- pick up uh, and play a, a couple of uh, matches and, uh, and put, put down because the, yeah. like the, the main story, it's, it's, not re- it's not a short game. Uh, it, yeah, it, it takes ma- ma- yeah. like, what, mm. uh, two hours maybe? Yeah, two, three hours yeah. if you enter everything. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's uh, also a secret, well, maybe not so secret, minigame. Uh, yeah, so. uh, right on the main menu. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, true secret. <laughs> it's called uh, Friends Quest, where you play as this character that they're living yeah. at. Uh, and she's actually called Friend. Yeah, she, mm. she's just called Friend. And you play as her, and you dungeon crawl, and when you go into a battle, uh, this uh, psychic card game starts up, and... Mm-hmm. You use that to like attack and uh, do magic. Yeah. One thing you haven't uh, described like the main mechanic. What differentiates the like main game from Minesweeper? The oh. abilities. Yes. Uh, so the game itself is uh, um, a bunch of cards, and like as in Minesweeper, you get hints on what what things are nearby, and you have to avoid bad cards and find uh, good cards. In, in Minesweeper you don't have to find anything good, you just have to mark all the bad, so it's a mm. bit different already. Mm. And uh, we there's, a, there's also these star cards that will give you points and increase the special meter. And you can use various special abilities set to each character. Each yeah. character has uh, two special abilities. And this is why, where Psy comes in, because they, they are psychic abilities. Yeah, that too. But even the main game, uh, the the hints that appear on the cards are uh, not actually there, so mm-hmm. to speak. Ah, they're, okay. they, they're supposed to be like something that only the player sees, really. Yeah. Right. And that comes uh, through with the non-psychic character, the hard mode. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, right. Oh yeah, she uh, doesn't have any powers at all. So, so she can't even see see any any. Yeah. Honestly, I think that's the most exciting way to play a <laughs> game. Well, but people might not agree, but. She has. Uh, there's this character that has no psychic powers. That's her plot line, mm. and uh, so she doesn't get any hints. She's picking cards uh, randomly. <laughs> <laughs> she has special abilities to use if she ever finds the star cards. That can be very useful. But uh, overall, she has to try to read the opponent and look at uh, what cards the opponent right, picks, right. and you can assume <coughs> maybe those cards are safe mm, to pick mm. because he's picking over there and. Okay. That kind of thing. Also, another difference from Minesweeper is that there's more hidden inf- information. Sometimes you just have to guess. Yeah, yeah. it's it's not a perfect game. I guess yeah. mi- and Minesweeper isn't either. I think you sure. can lock yourself in mm. a Minesweeper sometimes. But this, this game is more about uh, just uh, trusting your instincts. I guess. Yeah, but <laughs> there's uh, there's also <coughs> the uh, the whole uh, there's two col- colors on the on the cards uh, and yeah. you get some uh, some vague hints of the likeliness. Also, also, it's not just one match and it's game over. No, it's exactly. The best out of like yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. the the game is not <coughs> over if you pick one wrong yeah, card. Exactly. So it's it's more forgiving that way. I'm so actually I'm kind of into like a, a tiny bit of randomness and mm-hmm. uh, stuff in games, and uh, I guess I was aiming for more of a. It's more of a poker game, you know. People have tournaments exactly. uh, in poker, even though it's yeah. uh, it's kind of random. Yeah, and and you, you never know if you're gonna win a poker game, but the best poker players will be in like the finals of yeah. the tournaments. Mm. So, so it's that kind of game. You only need an edge of like one percent in mm-hmm. a random game to make it competitive. Mm-hmm. If you if you can yeah, push that edge yeah. another another percent, you you are the best player. There are definitely parts in Psycard where you can scan the whole board and just. Uh, like calculate where the remaining mm. cards are. Yeah. yeah, and and after playing, I'm I'm probably the one who has played it the most, and I'm, I think I've started developing a, like a more aggressive tactic. I didn't consider at first, like trying to 
block uh, the opponent's uh, right. cards. Mm. Like, uh, mm. Yeah, I've uh, tried mm. a bit of that. I'm not as good as, uh, as you, but uh, mm. yeah, there, you, you can you can mess with the opponent mm. uh, even. Yeah, it's a, it's also a game where you're not really expected to win. <laughs> I mean, I managed to uh, beat the game, but uh, the other times I played, I didn't even get close. Mm. Yeah, and the plot is actually uh, kind of about that, I guess. They winning or losing in the end doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna spoil anything mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because if you uh, if you lose, the game continues. It's oh not yeah, uh, you'll always reach the end. Yeah. And uh, they'll always be pretty chill about mm-hmm. whatever happens. Mm. So it's uh, as as we mentioned, it's a pretty short sessions that you play, and we only made it for now at least on mobile and tablets. Yeah. We've been discussing a Steam version, mm. but uh, I would like to add some kind of deck building mechanic. I've been thinking of some sort of markers, like poker markers, that you can place on the cards. Oh. Uh, um, well, Something I accidentally the um, uh, repurposed the uh, Steam ID that we yeah. had for another game, so, <laughs> yeah. so but that's gonna it's that's whatever. that's gonna come out before actually. Another um, game. Another game? game? Yeah, it's yeah. a random access murder. Yeah, you're. Mm-hmm. We, we're gonna talk about that later in our oh. jam uh, section. Even oh. though it says 64 jam, we, we'll talk about uh, mm-hmm. alcohol. Yeah. That too. <clears throat> uh, Since I'm here, I guess we could talk a little about. A little bit about the music yes. in Psycard. Um, First of all, maybe we should uh, mention the setting of Psycard is a uh, cyberpunk sort of dystopian city, mm. and but but they're kind of fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the setting. Yeah, um, yeah, and uh, the music uh, is kind of random, I guess. the The main music in the campaign, where the the dialogues are based out of like dating sims and anime and stuff like that but the game play sound is kind of like techno electronic 90s crappy sounds uh, kind of kind of kind of electronica mm. it's pretty cool um but the whole um, the whole like different genres that was in- inspired by like in- dating sims and uh, such uh, overall because or the whole like mixing and yeah mixing exactly and they they have uh, oft- often they have a lot of different uh, genres that they mix b- yeah. depending on the moods and they're often very distinct yeah because it really f- feels like it when you're talking to people and the the mood switches and the yeah exactly the switches over completely yeah, I like the uh, the boss song that changes tempo constantly <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's another weird thing, weird thing with the soundtrack tempo shifts mm. Cool, and the game is done. Yes, and mm. it's it's going to be out on the twenty eighth. Yeah, on App Store oh, or <coughs> whatever month this is. Yes, I think it's April. Yeah. I think we should talk about uh, what we've been playing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, take a break from the Ludosity topics a bit. Uh, we'll get back to it mm-hmm. later. I have uh, I've played um, a game called Clash Royale. It's <coughs> very very indie. Uh, very yeah. It's like yeah. It's like very indie. Triple A of mobile gaming. Uh, I guess everyone's like seen it. On App Store, um, it but it's actually really, really good. It seems really competitive. It is competitive. It's like one of the f- r- first real competitive games on on mobile. Is it related to Clash of Clans? Yes. It is made by the same guys or gals. It's in the same universe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's a deck builder lane battler kind of game. And yeah, real time lane strategy card collecting game. <laughs> And it's good, and it, it all works out. I mean, the design of the game is not sounds like a mash of like a hundred different genres, but it's it's quite clear what what it is that you're supposed to do. And uh, funny thing, so <clears throat> I've actually been looking for a long time for a free to play game that I want to just plow money into to win. <laughs> so really, pay to win. Yeah, really pay to win. So I I chose this game. Uh, 
I put in 500 kroner in it in just one go, like the first day. Yeah. Uh, I haven't paid any more since because I still actually have some, some gold left from that. Um, and it, it really helped, but I don't think it helped me too much, I don't know. I think you have to play the game a lot. And, yeah. and that's basically <coughs> what you would pay for a, for a AAA AAA game yes. on a console. Yeah. So, so, I mean, if I get that amount of fun out of it, it's, it's, it's the same. And I, I've paid 600 kroners for a, for a console games that I played like for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. For me, free to play is weird because um, <coughs> like I don't... I, I, um, download a free-to-play game on my 3DS for example and then see like 10 kroner I'm not gonna pay that <laughs> <laughs> and then when I when we um, take a break in the middle of the day and buy some ice cream for like 30 kroner yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> so yeah I've been playing that um, other than that I haven't been playing much but that's the game that I uh, I pull out when I go to the toilet so mm -hmm. I play it like five times a day and uh, usually we we play a game uh, during our lunches. Usually yeah. we bring our retro games, and we were playing Kingsfield Four and making progress. But almost, then almost up to the end. Almost to the end. Oh, mm. were we? Yeah, we're pretty yeah. close. Yeah, I guess we had three eyes and put them in the door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you should imagine that that we played like Kingsfield one, two, three, yeah, and we four, were, and yeah, Shadow like Tower. Tower. Yeah, it, it's yeah. Uh, it's the we've plowed through the old back catalog of uh, from software uh, mm. all the way from from their earlier days to uh, yeah. to this uh, Kingsfield. last Kingsfield game, and now we have mm. uh, moved yeah. on to their more recent, more no well known stuff. Mm. Yeah, you will or or Matthias, I can't remember, but yeah, I actually I bought the retail thing and it didn't which work. It didn't. Uh, uh, which game is it? Dark Souls? No. Dark Souls Free. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I never remember if it's Demon Souls or Dark Souls mm. or whatever. Yeah, it's, uh, is it Dark Souls Souls Free? free? <laughs> <laughs> so I I bought the retail box and it didn't work in our dev kit for some reason, so we bought it twice. <laughs> Yeah, but we yeah. made it work. Yes, yeah, finally it worked. It took us like two days. Yeah. So anyone has an uh, <laughs> Xbox dev kit, you have to download the latest one from uh, <laughs> the latest OS from the Microsoft server and then buy the games digitally for some reason. I don't know. Yeah, we didn't but is it fun? Yes. It's pretty cool. It's yeah. uh, very much like Dark Souls 1, I feel. Uh, but I faster. I, th I think it's a lot faster. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it feels like Demon Souls. I've only played through Demon Souls. Mm. Yeah, it, it, I've only played Bloodborne, uh, so that's my reference. I don't know. If it's Bloodborne very is, different. I heard that Bloodborne is more difficult. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel that way. Uh, Bloodborne is more about like, like I'm not really that into it, but it's more of more of like you have to dodge everything like a mm. fighting game master. Well, um, um, Dark Souls is a bit more slow and mm. lenient. I, 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 I uh, draw the comparison to Resident Evil actually where mm. you um, you take a step forward, you take a step back, mm. it's very slow and sort of like a dance and you position yourself mm. and then this uh, really gross animation happens where everything is exploding into bits. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it still um, it still has that uh, what brings me to Dark Souls is kind of like the flavor, the setting, the the mm. mood uh, thing, and I think uh, thus far they've they've nailed that thing in uh, in the third game. I I love the yeah. old uh, ca castle setting and all the like weird details and thing. I'm I'm rem mm. I'm probably gonna get get my own copy one day and just. Just play it on my own because it's. it's um, I love in immersing myself in uh, in their yeah. and I guess we could kind of games. I guess we could just technically run past enemies and stuff, but um, mostly we just peek around corners and say, "Oh, there's a guy. Mm -hmm. the, the, it's it's that guy with the with a spear." <laughs> we had yeah. a lot of great reactions. Yeah, like, take it yeah. very like, very oh, sharp. There's the the dragon or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. then you look around the corner. Oh, there's two. There's two guys. Let's go over here. Yeah, <laughs> and um, uh, today there was like a, a grand courtyard with one guy, and we yeah. uh, we we pretty much knew by then that yeah, there's not going to be just one guy and like <laughs> forty guys jumped in. And then we spent around about ten minutes um, 
there was this miniboss who we defeated by backstabbing twice by sneaking in a circle around him very, very ca- yeah, carefully. Yeah, just <laughs> c- circling around his, uh, his level, uh, level walking path and slowly inching mm. closer. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. That's yeah. too bad for that. It was yeah. a shame. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's it's, it's in- intense. It's um, it has a lot of it comes together with a, like a lot of good parts into. Mm. Uh, so to me, it feels like a game where you try and like read what you can exploit, and then you exploit mm. it, and it's sort of made for that, yeah. mm. as opposed to a more polished game, I guess, or like a more streamlined game design-wise, where. Mm. Everything is clear what you do, and you just mm. yeah. do it. This is more like everything is lethal, including the player, if you mm. just take mm. it easy and uh, play to your strengths. Yeah. Cool. Any other games? I've been playing the Doom 4 multiplayer beta, and people online seems to ha- seems to hate it. I don't know why, because I love it. Mm. Uh, it's I think it captures the old-school arena shooter style very well. It's just... Like Quake Three and stuff. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like like the Quake Three and and not other exact, such not similar games. Not exactly Quake One or Doom One, but uh, rather that sort of explosion with Unreal Tournament and Quake, yeah, exactly. Quake Three. And Actually, I guess that's the the the, the arena shooter mm-hmm. genre makers are the Quake Three and. Sounds very similar to Doom Three at multiplayer. Actually. I haven't actually played Doom Three multiplayer, so I don't know. I don't because know how it when, compares. When I played that, I felt like this is just Quake Three. Hmm. It was basically just. Quake this 3. doesn't really feel like Quake. It's a bit slower, hmm. uh, but it's still those room connected by some uh, pathways and tunnels to another square room, very defined playing space. You don't get stuck on stuff in the way, and there's no ledges or. or uh, anything like that. It's simple rooms, uh, quick gameplay, there's no running, there's a double jump, there's nothing more. Um, you have there, there is a load. There's no reload button. Mm. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> you press the R key and nothing happens. Yeah, it's, yeah it's they, really they, they load up but it's is, awesome. the, is the thing that people comment on. I guess about. that's... but you choose two of, I guess, the eight weapons or something like that to bring, to com- uh, bring out to combat and every time you, time you die you can change which two weapons it, it, it is kind of like uh, isn't uh, uh, like a counter strike or something like yeah that? I guess it's more like counter strike except not buy with money but sounds a bit like uh, fair uh, maybe fair multiplayer you can choose weapons never played fair mm-hmm. but there are also weapon pickups in the levels yeah yeah and speed boosts and uh, a de- new demon power up uh, mm-hmm. that makes you a giant demon that destroys everything uh, and you get your health bar at the top of everyone's screen so everybody knows how much health you are at because if you die they become the demon so mm-hmm. everyone wants to be the last hit and so, grab so there's, it. there's always a demon in play? Or no, the demon spawns I think like every two or three minutes and lasts for like I don't know a minute maybe before it disappears I guess when I looked at it I was, um, when people uh, when the game was first unveiled uh, people were saying, uh, oh, it's like uh, Doom 1 and 2, but it's not, actually. <laughs> it's just that Doom 3 was so radically different that it sort of dulled their expectations. Mm. <laughs> because uh, Doom Doom 1 uh, in single and multiplayer is uh, absolute bananas. Mm. <laughs> because you run at 100 miles per hour and every weapon is insta-kill. <laughs> That's pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, very different. It's like Quake 1, where... Yeah, <laughs> a rocket launcher and quad, and you just uh, fly around the arena at 500 miles per hour and explode everyone within a 10 yeah, meter that's radius. Fun. That's fun. Yeah, but it's very different from what yeah. what I expected when I heard about Doom 4. <laughs> Doom 4 uh, yeah, reminded me that of, of a type of game that I missed. Games can be fun. But I didn't know that I missed. I, I've forgotten all about mm. the arena shooter and how fun and quick they are. You just start yeah. a game go into a match and then you shoot people for yeah. 10 minutes and then you play another match, shoot people for 10 minutes, there's no respawn time, there's nothing, just yeah. run and gun. 
I love it. I would have liked if there was a, because you said there's only team team deathmatch. Yeah, and there's some other modes in I haven't the, tried yet. Like but, in the uh, that's only in uh, this uh, pre preview, right? All oh, right, there's a lot of modes they haven't. Because I, I would like a pure deathmatch, like uh, everyone there, against. There, them I think the there will be one uh, in the. Know, uh, maybe they will patch it in if there's a demand because that's that was the classic deathmatch. Yeah, Back in the day, it feel, feels like uh, like this uh, beta mass might have they might have only like tried to have one yeah, and mode or something. Unreal was more team, while Quake was really. One. Oh, maybe well. I, uh, there were a lot of team modes. Yeah, yeah they emphasized the teams. Speculation. So There's one thing in Doom 4 I think they should remove, and that's the the animation kills with mm. melee. I think that that doesn't fit. That, that, that makes no sense in a, in like a, a it's a, bad a, actually a, for a, you a, to kill. arena. Mm. If you yeah. should like if if you're locked into an animation, mm. that sounds really bad for you. However, mm. if that's instant kill, I I would probably prefer it because the the gauntlet in Quake 3. I, <laughs> yeah. I love to use the gauntlet, but it's really. It doesn't insta kill people. It takes. Yeah, the melee doesn't insta kill in Doom Three, Doom Four rather uh, either. But but when you kill someone, you're locked in animation. So I guess mm. it's like but a punishment for you yeah, getting a kill. Mm. Like it kind of makes you sense. become a target. It kind of makes sense that if, if it was instant and inst- like if it was yeah, instantly it done and, and yeah, insta kill, yeah, so it would then be it would be too good. So but, but no, like because that's how it was in the Fear. And that yeah. was uh, that was really amazing. If you got close to someone, you could just bop them with uh, <laughs> like the weapon, and they would instantly die. Yeah. And uh, but can you do it from the front? So yeah, you from, run from against each other from anywhere, and right. Uh, so I, like, I don't like, like that. Battlefield, you have you have the knife in Battlefield. Where you can go up from behind and, and take them out. Oh, yeah. Um, and I don't think it works from the front, but that animation is maybe one one to two seconds or something and uh, but it's worth yeah. it because I mean, well, shooting them takes two seconds so doom 4 already sounds uh, more fun than trying to play um, soldier in tf2 and expecting quake mm-hmm. <laughs> because all he does is reload and walk like a slug yeah <laughs> i know he's supposed to rocket jump but i think i think you only move slow in the in doom 4 if you have the sniper mm. and you're actually scoping i think mm. that's the only time you move slow and that makes I sense so. just name, doom 1 actually had a sniper it turns out that um the shane gun's first two bullets always hit uh, s- dead straight center so if you just tap the button with a shane gun you have a very powerful sniper <laughs> in doom <laughs> mm. but uh, i guess that's sort of they want a bit more um, carefully designed weapons this time <laughs> And and if you like the weapon, the the shaft from Quake Three, the lightning gun, mm. that's in here, and that's awesome. Mm. I love that weapon. That's cool. That's a cool weapon. That that, that one and the, the rocket launcher was like the main Quake weapons. Yeah, and those the weapons are the main weapons in Doom Four. It yeah. seems mm. in in uh, Quake One and uh, oh, and the super shot, shotgun. Yeah, and in so, um, and the ray gun. <laughs> when is this game gonna be out? I don't know. In a month, I think, or three weeks. Yay or nay? Yeah, I'm gonna buy it. Cool. Uh, I recently, I'm in a hard uh, playthrough of uh, Grimrock 2. Uh, mm. I played that game when it came out. It was a day one buy for me. Um, I wanted to support the team, so I bought it from them. Uh, uh, because I really like their stuff. Mm. Um, and um, they're a small Finnish team, and it felt like it was a sort of parallel to our team when we made Italy 2. Like, they made their first game that was sort of proof of concept and then they made their second game which is bigger and better designed and has more content and everything is just better <laughs> so we're gonna uh, be as successful as uh, <laughs> I, I don't know actually I know Grimrock is uh, sort of niche because he's a first person dungeon crawler with a with a party and lots of puzzles mm. and uh, about as much puzzling as there is combat and a lot of secrets and exploration they just dump you on an island and it's like uh, you have to figure out what you're supposed to do and then how to do it and there are plenty of like bosses and ambushes and uh, things you just don't see coming <laughs> mm. um, I, I'm also very appealed to that thought where you just sort of start start yeah, what I, with something small and, mm. uh, and what, I, what, I, what I like about that game is that it leaves you to it like um, there may be a puzzle every puzzle in the game has at most one hint if it has a hint at all that's all the help you're getting mm. and the hint uh, may not be where the puzzle is <laughs> so you have to you have to take notes you have to be very careful 
and uh, like some parts are obviously traps <laughs> so one um, one trap that I really liked was uh, uh, so there's this island master on the island uh, you know that he's the one setting all this up uh, mm. he makes it clear because he uh, writes uh, letters to you that he hides in logs and stuff <coughs> um, it, just like it little too the, the island is very designed mm. for adventurers right. except that this guy is a lot more malicious than the bad guys in little too uh, there's one uh, sort of puzzle where there's this uh, skill upgrade book lying in an alcove and there's a very obvious trapdoor underneath and there's a sign just to write of it that says I dare you <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I actually figured out a way to take the book without falling down the pit. Mm. I don't know if it, if it was intentional, but I felt like I was smarter than But then I jumped into the pit anyway, broke my legs and got murdered by giant pirate rats. <laughs> pirate rats? <laughs> yeah. Um, but you felt so, some kind of uh, parallel to Italy too? Yeah, because um, while we were in the early stages of Italy 2, I played Grimrock 2 for the first time and noticed uh, we have an island master. They have an island master. Uh, <laughs> there are a small have a Scandinavian team. Small <laughs> yeah, Scandinavian and uh, in Grimrock 2, the very first thing you find is a stick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> after crashing onto an island <laughs> on a raft. Can you pick it up <laughs> as your uh, party member? And yeah, there are also yeah. lockpicks. And uh, I was like, oh. <laughs> this I, this I is like when I discovered that, that uh, our first game, Bob Came in Pieces, was just a ripoff of Pikmin. <laughs> Story-wise, so you're, yeah. you're this alien, mm -hmm. you crash land on Earth, and your objective is to collect all the oh. ship parts again. You mean like Totem and Earl on the Mega Drive? Yeah, <laughs> and, and I, I made those uh, Bunibon games with yeah. the bunny bounces on mobile, and <coughs> I thought I was being really smart, but mm -hmm. apparently there was already a game where you oh, constantly I, bounce. I played yeah. games like that in QBasic. Oh. <laughs> but uh, they had a twist that you, you jump higher and higher, and there's fall damage. <laughs> but in Grimrock, um, so Grimrock 2 has this guy called the Island Master and uh, Puzzle in Italy 2 was at first called the Island Master as well but I was like I this can't, is too I, much yeah I can't do that um, because people are going to think it's a ripoff so I changed him to like the Island Caretaker but he, um, as the game uh, evolves uh, the games take very different paths in the mm. end towards mm. what actually happens in the end so, uh, but at first glance, it's they even have the same title screen. There's an island at, uh, <laughs> <laughs> on, on the horizon. <laughs> so you, uh, how long ago did you get this game? So you, you've been uh, playing it for a while. Though. When it came out, uh, it took about twenty or thirty hours to finish. Mm. Uh, I tried to find every secret, but I didn't. Um, so. But I played it on normal uh, without any of the hardcore options uh, checked. You can turn off the map and uh, turn off saving anywhere. Is the, is the pu are the puzzles any different on hard? Uh, no. The only thing that changes between difficulty levels is how aggressive the enemies are. Uh, nothing else sh uh, changes. Their stats mm. doesn't change even? No. Oh. Just how aggressive. But that's uh, difficult enough. Mm. Because it's a game where you really don't want to get cornered because then you're dead. <laughs> Right. So now I'm playing through it on hard again, and I know the puzzles, but I still find it satisfying because it was a while since I played. Um, and you can also like build your own party and customize them just like old pen and paper role playing games, except there's no real role playing. You so level up your characters. Mm. <coughs> yeah, I've um, I've been. Uh, on and off with um, uh, Pillars of Eternity, and that's what I've been mainly playing. The is, is that the Baldur's Gate? Story? Yeah, the, it is Baldur's mm. Gate. Yeah. I was, I was uh, <laughs> coming to that, and because it, it was, it was either going to be that or some kind of strategy uh, fantasy <laughs> game. Yeah, because I, uh, I was really happy when I first heard about the Pillars of Eternity because I've, I wasted a lot of summers. Uh, when I was a kid playing Baldur's Gate and I was hoping that uh, that pillars would be like capturing some of that vibe and when I've been playing it more and yeah it is 
exactly like <laughs> kind of like well not exactly but some some of the like mechanics and the combat is the combat is very different it's it's not the advanced Dungeons and Dragons thing it's it's kind of, but it's it's similar you can you can pause you can make a lot of tactical uh, decisions uh, during the combat the combat is actually really hard uh, at mm. my, at many points and I I like it because it's make it makes it so you maybe have to do a lot of uh, a lot of tries at uh, and to come up with new tactics uh, with with your party. And this so was a Kickstarter. Okay. Yeah, it was a, a Kickstarter game, and it's uh, I don't know. It's, it was in the development for uh, for quite a while. <coughs> so but it's, it's it's done and out. Yeah, it, it's uh, done and out, and it's I think it even had like some expansion and oh, and cool. such. But I've I've been like exploring exploring the wildness and it the the main thing that makes me like really love the game is it's it's it is as open as uh, Bo- the first Baldur's Gates is even more more open than the first game because the you can't get into into the main city in Baldur's Gate in the beginning and this in this game you can Explore the entire countryside. It's a huge map, and you can even get into the the like huge main city. And it it is as compact. It, mm-hmm. it so so thus far it feels as compact as uh, the first Baldur's Gate, and it, it gives me the same like really childish uh, sense of mm-hmm. exploration and, mm-hmm. and stuff. And um, it it makes me happy because the whole like. A top-down, very tactical or like t- turn-based style RPG. It felt like a genre that was pretty much dead uh, mm. in like uh, main, mainstream game uh, games. And so it's it that, that's what I like nowadays with, with the games industry. Like every dead genre is being revived. Yeah, and it's, it's just it's just getting more and more uh, like. The, the market is just growing in every direction. Yeah, because it, 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 it felt like uh, for a while <coughs> it was kind of like tightening down uh, mm-hmm. and focusing on on on, more, on uh, in like a couple of genres. But yeah. it, f- it feels like uh, a lot of them have been re- rejuvenated. Uh, There's a new King's Quest. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like adv- adv- adventure games had a resurgence uh, mm-hmm. too. Does, does this uh, new Bulge Gate still use the pre-rendered backgrounds and stuff? Um, I think uh, I think some of the uh, the stuff uh, are. Uh, I, like I saw pre- some tech demos. It has some really weird 3D going on. Mm, uh, they, because the the perspective is the Bulge Gate perspective, so I think I think some of, of the the stuff might be tricked tricked or something. But it, it is 3D models and like uh, characters. And enemies and, and a lot of other stuff, but it uh, I can't I can't really tell uh, mm. if it, if it is, mm. it is uh, some of it might it, be pre-rendered. It looks good. Yeah, it's it looks good. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean I have some some minor gripes uh, on some stuff, but I, I can let a lot of things slip if mm. it makes me feel like a kid again. <laughs> yeah. Be- before we move on to the next uh, topic, I have more. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should move on. Yeah, we yeah, should move on. But, a lot of time on this. Yeah. But, but first, let's talk about uh, Kingsfield Force uh, European localization. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, we, you get, you go out there and they start talking about H two O. Yeah, the, the magical H two O springs. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yeah, Sella made the magical H two O spring to heal the sick babes. Yeah, yeah. The the there's a lot of babes what? in this translation. <laughs> yeah, the the babes of darkness. Uh, the the entire uh, like they they mi- mix and match like fantasy language with like modern yeah. slang and and, and uh, weapons like the speed pounder and yeah. uh, <laughs> and the manual axe and the bugger, yeah. bugger blade by the basic bugger blade <laughs> and the <laughs> the machete that's a, a like, like a pole axe that they call, <laughs> call a machete yeah the the entire translation is pure gold and that's that's always been a like a thing with K- Kingsfield that they 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 are very riffable games and yeah, but, uh, but we played the first the three in Japanese yeah but so. there there's still so much weirdness in going on in Kingsfield so it's very yeah. easy to play in a group and riff on the things that's uh, going on like uh, I think uh, what took the longest to figure out was what's a blimp and it turns <laughs> out, it turns out that they are these giant automaton stone uh, yeah. go- golems yeah. they're, they're blimps yeah of course they are.
so uh, let's talk about jams. Jams. Jam. <laughs> <laughs> there was a low res jam mm-hmm. that most of us uh, participated in, and then there was a the Nordic Game Jam in Copenhagen. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I teamed up with a few guys, the Landfall guys, and uh, some other cool kids. Uh, we made a game called Random Access Murder that actually won. So now we're gonna yay! Yeah. 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 It, 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 it kind of taps into what uh, Matthias was talking about the uh, old school arena show. Yes, it, it's a, it's an old school and it's kind of like. Yeah, the basic gameplay is sort of like Quake 3 or something like that but with a twist where uh, almost all the weapons are instead of dealing damage they deal annoyances in the form of uh, annoying pop-up ads or they all tab you to the desktop or um, what else um, glitches the screen and makes uh, bunch of screen effects that make it hard to see yeah this uh, thing is uh, one of the things if I if I just had the game like described to me I would <laughs> say that that sounds like a terrible idea <laughs> but the thing is all the like annoyances are just hilarious they're they're great the, yeah. it's uh, yeah. every, it's uh, every everything that uh, just uh, can come up and and just uh, and, and it's and kind uh, of tactical because every weapon does its own annoyance. Yeah, yeah. it's always surprising. <laughs> like but there's so there's always something yeah. weird going on. So yeah. we're we're making small changes now to the design, so it's going to be more clear that it's really like that. With some some weapons are just annoyances, uh, and then there's the main weapon that actually deals damage. So we're gonna switch around the controls a little bit and make that clearer, um, and. Making some, like we're gonna add some like friends, yeah. st- Steam, Steam friend joining whatever, and um, gonna put it out on Steam I think, pretty soon. So that's fun. It's yeah. interesting with the annoyance weapons because when you shoot someone at point black with the shotgun, you just know that he's like yeah. he he, he hits yeah, your we're, guts. We're, we're, you're gonna know for sure in the coming versions because we're gonna display like. Mm. Uh, their screen in front of them like a hologram oh, yeah. Yeah. so you can that, see cool. what, what they nice. see so if you, they have a lot of pop-ups in their faces okay. you, be you, you can already like tell if you really messed them up because <laughs> they're just walking around like headless yeah, chickens yeah, yeah. or just yeah. stand, standing still just kind walking of off and play, play. <laughs> yeah. but when we played this game we didn't have uh, any instructions really so at first we felt like wow the shotgun is really bad it has this mm. long reload time it doesn't mm. seem to do any damage yeah but then you realize that the weapons do various <laughs> things and you're like oh I'll, I'll shoot someone with a shotgun and then finish him off with the first weapon if he yeah. doesn't walk off a ledge first yeah. was the wall climbing intentional uh sort of i mean we knew about it and we left it in mm. i think it's fun yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's awesome. not a bug it's a feature mm. yeah exactly it's a, when we, when uh, another intentional thing is that you can there is no limits to the mouse look so you can mm. look around 360 degrees <laughs> 360 times 360 degrees in every direction so you can do a somersault jumping off like this for example (laughs) Uh, which is it's kind of interesting because we've had we've had like these they have like people turning 180 degrees straight forward and shooting someone behind them yes (laughs) with the screen upside down because there is a bug in there but but like we've had 3D games where you jump around a lot for over 20 years and mm. we even had parkour mm. first person 3D games but not not a single one has has uh, yeah. full motion like full mm. degrees so yeah, the so only, yeah. there's only one example I know of, that's when you control a rocket in perfect arc yeah, it or controls or in some, perfect some, or some like it's hybrid games like Descent or some, yeah. uh, some like uh, yes. weird, weird hybrid yeah. experiment <laughs> Descent yeah. is really hard to play <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> Yeah. But, but one thing I noticed in uh, in random access murder is the shot. I don't know, not the shot, the sniper. Yeah. Because uh, when you zoom in, it's, it does zoom in, but the scoop is like uh, it's a mesh, uh, yeah. like pixel. Yeah, we, we we put a. I thought that was great. I love that. Yeah. It looks good, but it makes it harder. It so it doesn't work. I, actually, you get you have a hot crosshair anyway, so <laughs> not scoping mm. is a lot more effective. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you have to do so mean a bit with the scoop. So I yeah, found yeah. myself actually using the scoop, even though it has uh, this. I, uh, I assume that stuff. was like a gimp, gimping thing that uh, mm. you have to be really, really good to be able to use. The because the sniper is really powerful. Sniper. It has yeah. a really mean. Uh, yeah. yeah, don't uh, don't spoil it because. <laughs> 
uh, play the game. It's yeah, do play uh, the game. It's, it's actually already available on itch. Okay. So you can yeah. It's called on Random it Access Murder. Itch dot itch dot io. Yes. Yeah. And then there was the Lurus, yeah. Yeah. It's a gen where you try to make a game in 64 times 64 resolution. And uh, we all started games, but only two people finished them, kind of. Yes, I made a 3D version of Quest Forge, the game we released for the NES uh, uh, way back. Yeah, do, yeah. do people know about maybe? Quest Forge? Should we talk about the origins, like the Atari game and then the NES game? <laughs> right, right. The, the true story. About it's, it. it's my go to <laughs> game. It started people, many people. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> But people usually do like uh, a space shooter or something to as a hello world mm -hmm. game when they try to make a game for something because it's simple. It's you just move around. My version is the Quest Forge series, which I've made for the. But it is the a Atari funny. It is a funny backstory because it all started with the retro games fair in Gothenburg like three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were we were making we were all making Atari games. Uh, but it, it started even before that yeah, with, the, with, the, with his um, NES uh, prototyping. Oh, there, right. Or yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's always been the game I do first yeah. for every platform for some reason. Since, since I got the NES and then I tried on different other things and some were scrapped and some were mm. made. So I made this for this jam. So I tried to make it full 3D but in 64 by 64 resolution. So it's very, very low res. The, the, um, the, most, the, the basic gameplay of Quest Forge yeah, is the chicken, chicken oh, right. race battle. Exactly, I call it the, the chicken race battle mechanic. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you run towards your enemy like in Ease or any other of those old games. And just before you hit the enemy you have to press the attack button to fill up your power meter that quickly drains. And you want to try and touch the enemies with as full of the bar as possible. Yeah, so you can't go too early or too, too exactly, late. Exactly, that's why it's a chicken race. If you press too late, you get no damage. If you press too early, you get some damage. Uh, but if you press just before, you get a critical hit and do double damage. Yeah, yeah. It's a chicken em up. Yeah, and it's a... And, and the, the, the uh, jam was, what, like two weeks? Two weeks and an extra weekend, I think. Uh, and you finished? Yeah, I finished. You can play it. It's on it's on itch.io. Mm -hmm. uh, just search for Quest Forge 3D. For the Lurus Yam, I first I made a a pixel mockup and posted on Twitter and seemed pretty popular. But then I scrapped that and of started, a, of course, and scrapped and started a bigger idea with no plan or anything, no direction, and of course I failed miserably. So all I made was this video of it, and that's... You can that's see it on Twitter! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it was basically just uh, graphics at this point. I made a, a game, uh, uh, Track and Slash, that's, uh, <laughs> well, basically uh, a, the dumbest RPG, <laughs> RPG or the most uh, or the weirdest uh, track and field ripoff it's, uh, um, it, it, the idea kind of came from a I played a really basic uh, like loot and kill uh, board game with a buddy and we, when we realized that the only thing you do is just roll the die pick a card, and if it's gold, you take the gold. If it's a monster, you roll the die and see if you <laughs> kill the monster. When we realized it, it was that simple, we only we started to only give each other like five seconds uh, turn, like, come on, come on, roll the die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, oh, oh, fuck, there was a monster. Oh, damn it, I took a damage. Okay, your turn, take the monster. <laughs> no, 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 t take the gold. <laughs> yeah, and I, I basically wanted that. So you in the menus, when you like uh, try to get into a different area, you constantly starve. You have like 10 seconds of food in your inventory. And if you if if you run out of it, you'll die in the menu. So you have to <laughs> yeah. you have to pick a, pick a place to go fast. And when you go some place, you either get loot or gold, 
or you get a monster. To kill the monster you need to button mash it up like a track and field, just mash the attack button or the magic button and you level up, you ga- gain items and, and you... And with the, when, you, when you get the gold, you, yeah. you, you pick gold with a button and you have to pick as much as you can. Yeah, before you starve to death. In, yeah. three, or <laughs> in three seconds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, uh, it's not a technically hard game, you <laughs> gain levels very fast, so, but it's more about don't, you need to, um, uh, to um, be tactical not to tire yourself out or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, and also you have to realize that the gold is completely pointless so well, don't waste po- it, uh, it is <laughs> points it is pointful it's gold <laughs> man it's literally <laughs> pointful yeah exactly <laughs> the, it, it's just for your end score yeah, the yeah. more you have the more gold you have when you die yeah, the better <laughs> yeah <laughs> or when you when you kill the king yeah so it, it's it, it was basically what, what I thought I could make in in uh, just a, a few sessions of, yeah. of game is this, uh, uh, is this one of your First games? No, play? it's um, the thing is I I used to make games, but when I when I went to but then I started working with a game company. Yeah, no, no, no. Then, then I then I went to went, went to the the uh, hug school and uh, the, yeah. the school here, the, to, and I kind of just started focusing on 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 making art, and so I went kind of went away from uh, making games. So I've been kind of uh, kind of on a hiatus. Uh, from making games. Because so. I remember we sat down a few years ago with Game Maker mm. uh, and you started on some projects. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah I'm, I've not, never been uh, like uh, using Game Maker uh, that much, but I've, uh, this this one was one of the like uh, re- one of the reasons why I signed up for the uh, 64 uh, like lower SDM was to kind of make myself uh, mm. do do a do a like uh, do some programming in it so i i wanted to learn how to make like a light rpg thing so that's yeah. why I've yeah i actually learned blender <coughs> with my mm, yeah, game as well uh, yeah. so yeah I, I found out that blender is you can use it to edit video but, uh, <laughs> that's a side note <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, our, our latest trailer is done in blender right? yeah the cycle <laughs> trailer yeah, anything it's blender awesome. can't do yeah, exactly <laughs> so but, daniel but but uh, oh, sorry. Oh. I was just gonna tell Nils that he his game turned out really well. Yeah, it's a really yeah, good. It's, it's the first Nils game I played. Really it's, it's also in three colors. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, four in, the, in the four. like old DOS wizardry style for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got started on a 64 uh, jam game, but it became obvious pretty soon that I wasn't gonna finish because uh, it sort of ballooned and. Uh, became uh, probably the game I'm going to make next in my spare time oh, cool. called the uh, Tower of Gold which is uh, uh, very very much inspired by uh, uh, Equinox on the Super Nintendo which is the sequel to Solstice a game you've been talking about for like 10 yeah. years yeah. <laughs> but this but um, I once tried to make an is- isometric game in Game Maker before I realized uh, this is not going to be possible mm. because <laughs> because magic <laughs> I mean I, I looked at uh, how Solstice on the NES uh, which only has one sprite layer and one tile layer like how do they manage to have, have the player stand on a block with a block above his head and an enemy on top of that block and then I looked at the sprite sheet and saw oh they wrote a C buffer to uh, cut pixels out of the uh, sprite sheet 60 times per second mm. okay <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that <laughs> Um, so what happened is um, my 64 jam game is instead viewed uh, from the side. It's a 2D side scroller, which looks a little bit like Zelda 2, uh, but with uh, uh, a lot of different types of blocks with uh, hidden information. Like you don't know what kind of block it is until you try to push it or stand on it or shoot it. Mm. Um, a lot of um, Equinox is part puzzle solving and part extremely difficult execution. Mm. Uh, it is not an easy game <laughs> and uh, this game was also supposed to be like uh, you travel from town to town on the overworld and each town has several entrances into a dungeon underneath it and uh, the dungeons get progressively more evil <laughs> like um, the next to last dungeon in uh, e- Equinox is a ghost ship which has no save points so you have to rely on your save spell which drains like half your mana and there is limited mana, 
and uh, there's actually a way to screw yourself over in that dungeon mm. <laughs> and uh, every single jump has to be precise and then the ship tilts back and forth <laughs> Uh, Wait, how, how does that work in that uh, asymmetric 3D? Uh, the, you you slide along the floor, <laughs> and, and things slide along the floor, and then there are puzzles where you have to stack blocks on top of enemies on conveyors and stuff. Of course. Uh, so in this in my game, um, I can't play with the perspective as they do in, Equ- in Equinox, um, because they do a lot of really evil puzzles involving. Uh, fake 3D perspective. Yeah, maybe that's uh, f- for, for <laughs> that's a positive thing. Mm. Mm. And also, um, I'm probably gonna do like Equinox for the bosses as well. One hit and it's over. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, are you putting the strawberry game on hold? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> doing both. I'm gonna finish that by summer. Uh, this is more like I only work on a strawberry game in the weekends. So this is something I've been. It's been fun to take my mind off uh, work and the strawberry game just to mm. code that instead of in my spare time. When are you going to name the strawberry game? <coughs> I don't know. But uh, th- but this game anyway, um, uh, we'll see if I finish it, but um, it's too big for a jam and I increased the resolution to 80 by 64. Oh damn. <laughs> because it wasn't, <laughs> <I rest. laughs> it, it wasn't really possible otherwise. So um, when, when you're Growing tired of this game, or are you gonna have <laughs> another smaller game to get your mind off? Um, maybe it's like, like a yeah. chain of games that like gets your mind off. When I make game. games in my spare time, I uh, figure like, okay, this is the last game I'm gonna, I'm gonna make for like five years because I have no more ideas. Then all of a sudden, like, oh, my, it wouldn't, uh, my, um, my games wouldn't be complete if I made this one. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's uh, like when when one of your uh, spare time uh, b- like b- spare time projects turn into a second job, then you <laughs> yeah, come up with a new spare yeah, time. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, well, the solution is not to make less; <coughs> it's to make even more. Yeah, I mean, I made three games while making EG, and then uh, Hyper Princess Pitch was made in a in an entire year while we made it to do, I think. Mm. But you're really good at finishing games and like sticking with them. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually That's just different. make one game at a time. Mm. But um, the thing with Princess Peach was that th- um, that that game started as um, a, a, dra- a drawing on the whiteboard <laughs> where Princess Peach was making quotation marks with her fingers and saying you will shoot bricks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, oh, now I know exactly what the game this is going to be. That kind of describes the game. It yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> kind so of describes the yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I mean, process. I had this uh, vague idea that I wanted to make a remake of Operation Carnage, but when I saw that picture, it's like, oh, now I know. Yeah. And I wanted to make a, like a Zelda 2 or Equinox-like game, like, oh, now I know. I think a, a lot of prototypes or even full games that's been made here are started on the whiteboard. Mm. Yeah, and many characters. The whiteboard <laughs> is a powerful thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the most t- powerful it's tool known to any game. Yeah, it uh, has to be used responsibly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just take anything off the whiteboard. Yeah, because then you end up with the apathetic frog in all of your games. Yeah. <laughs> He's and the Well, just <laughs> like any other game. Yeah. Is there any other in the game that doesn't have the, the cheese murderer? No, exactly. And that's what happens when you don't uh, use the whiteboard. Uh, mm. Okay, okay. So we've already lost. Listening. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Games can be fun.